Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to go back to AutoCAD and take a look at some questions that I was asked this week. Uh, one was, how do I create a block that cannot be exploded? And the second question always comes up is, well, I'm the CAD manager, what if I need to explode it? So, let's take a look at this scenario and see how it's done. Uh, you'll notice I have a, blo a block here. If I roll over this one, it's called cheese. If I select it, you'll see how it actually, it's, it's a single block. Now, if I double click on this block, I go to edit it, right? If I click on it, you'll notice that all the attributes come up, and it says name of the block, you know, Bob, and we go on down the list here. We have the attributes. The attribute here is cheese. I'll change that to, let's say, um, I don't know, we'll call it triangle. And I click out of it, you'll notice that the, it automatically updates because that's the attribute. Okay, now um, with that, there's some other little tricks we can do. Double click, and I can edit it here also. Now, um, so you notice that it's a block that contains attributes. Now, the question was, I want to make it where the users can't explode it. So I've internally set a switch that says cannot explode. So let's see what happens. I pick on the explode command right here, I select it, and then I select the block. Uh, it's this time, you notice it says one object selected, explode, and when I hit enter, see it says one could not be exploded. So you're thinking, oh wow, look at that, that's pretty slick. So how do I make that happen? Uh, what I'm going to do is build a box from scratch. So if you've never built a block with attributes before, uh, you'll also learn that trick also. It only takes a second. Uh, the first thing to do is you want to fire up a, com a command called attribute define, A-T-T-D-E-F. And I typed the command in because the interfaces have changed over the past few years and it, things have moved all over. But I always know A-T-T-D-E-F is attribute define. Hit enter. So it comes up and asks, it says, what's the tag going to be? This is going to be just a, it's going to be a piece of text that holds the place. It's going to be a placeholder. So I'll call it, let's say, uh, text one. And you can't have any spaces in there. So there we go. Next one's prompt. Uh, please, you can be as polite or as rude as you want. Please type, let's say, name. All right. And then the default, we'll just put Bob. Okay. Now, at this point, we have the ability to adjust all these applications, all this information. We also have some things over here. You'll see things like invisible. You wonder, well, why is that? Well, attributes can be drawn out and pulled into other databases or into schedules, etc. So some people even hide the, the data. Maybe it's a table. We want to put all the information about the table in there, but we don't want to see it. You can use invisible constant, things that never change. You can go verify, it'll ask you, and preset, etc. So lots of options here. We're not going to play too much with that. The main thing is we're going to say, uh, please type name. Default is Bob. What we do now is we hit OK. So what we've done is we've, we're actually creating the text attribute. We place that in. The next thing we want to put in is some uh, graphics. Now, we don't have to put graphics in. But uh, in a block, but it's going to make it a little easier to, to view. So I'm going to draw a line. I'll start right here and just drag over, and nothing real special. And we'll create some little box or whatever. Probably should just put a little box around it, but there we go. So there is our graphic, and there's the text that goes next to it. You'll notice that they're both uh, floating apart from each other. Now, at this time, we actually fire off the block command. You can type it, uh, B L O C K, or you can use it from over here, create block, etc. Hit enter. And now it says give it a name. So let's say I'm going uh, to call it uh, try tag for my triangle tag. Okay. Uh, pick a base point that works for you. So I'll place it right there. And now it says as we move across, we're going to come over here and say specify objects in the screen or select objects. So select the objects. And I hit enter. And it's going to walk us through. Now it's going to say convert to block. That makes it nice because it uh, actually converts to block, puts it right back in, and it works out well. Uh, different behavior. Annotative will actually scale it up and down to uh, using the annotative scale down here, which is pretty powerful. If you want to look into that, then maybe go find another video on it. But annotative scaling will scale this block up. For instance, if this is Texas 0.2 of an inch, it'll go down here and say, well, a scale of quarter inch, scale it up by 40, let's say 48, and it'll actually scale it up based on that scale right there. So it's a real powerful tool okay, that you can use there. And now we'll get to the one that we actually started the video about, which is allow exploding. Uh, if I turn it on, it allows the user to explode it. Well, I'm thinking, well, I've got this cool little tag here. I don't want Bob and Sue exploding it because then I'm losing my consistency. So I'm going to say, nope, you cannot explode it. So pretty much what we did was we said, give it a name, pick a point, pick the objects, do not allow exploding, and hit OK. Uh, now it comes up and it's going to ask, see, it's re-bringing it in. The default is Bob, and I hit OK.
OK. So I've rebought the block in. Now you see it actually works as a single unit, and I move it around. Now comes the cool part. We don't want the people in the office exploding it. So we go over here, we hit explode, and they pick it. And now I hit enter again, and notice it could not be exploded. Yeah, the thing is with, with AutoCAD, a lot of users are pretty smart that use AutoCAD. They know uh, a lot of ways around things, and in AutoCAD there's usually you know, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12 ways to do anything. Um, if someone tries to, to, let's say, fix something or do something, there's usually a way around it. So I'm going to show you the way around it so you understand how it works. The Let's say the beginner user who only knows a little bit about AutoCAD, he is not going to be able to explode it. He'll click the button, he'll get hit over here, he'll get frustrated, and then, you know, uh, maybe go online and look it up. But here's the real trick. You just use the block editor. Now, if I double click on here, you'll notice it pulls up this little thing. And it only lets me edit the text, which is good. Again, again, it's protecting it. And I'll t type in maybe Ray. Okay. Hit OK. So now the block says Ray. But all we have to do is type in B Edit. B Edit is a block editor. B Edit. Okay. We hit Enter. And we pick the, bo the block that we want to edit, which is Triangle. So when I hit OK, it moves into the block editor. In here, I can change anything. I can change the graphics. I can change just about anything, add some fancy features, but the big thing since we're talking about it is explode. If I scroll down over on the left hand side, notice I can say allow exploding. I can change it to yes, okay. At this time I close the block editor. It says, hey, do you want to save it? Yes. Save the changes to my triangle. Now, let's see what happens. I hit the explode button. I pick on Ray. And now I hit enter. And notice it exploded. So the block editor will let you explode it. So uh, I guess just don't tell anybody about B-Edit, and they can't explode it. So there's a tip of the week, how to create blocks with attributes, uh, how to adjust the explode, non-explode option, and the workaround to actually explode it when you, the CAD manager, have to edit it in the future. Hope you enjoyed it. You can check us out on the web at thebimguys.com or cadtechseminars.com. Thank you.